I know, I said, I accept defeat. I said that I was gonna move on and I was going to just, you know, be okay with the temperatures that I was stuck with, with the massive failed delitting experiment, the direct dye, all of that. I said I was done. But if you know me, which, you know, you may not, you know that that was not the end of the story. So yes, I, uh, I, I water cooled my PC, like the right way. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing off my first ever water cooled build. Now I'm not talking about all-in-one water coolers, those I've used plenty often before, but instead I'm talking about a full-on custom-built water cooling loop. Now I didn't go full-on hard tubing, now I used soft tubing, mainly because I take apart and, and move things around on my computer and having hard tubing, that just doesn't make sense for me. At least not with this computer and at least not right now. Now, if you don't know the specs of this computer, I will link a card above to show the full complete initial build. Now, if you don't know the specs of this computer, I will link a card above to show the full complete initial build, along with linking to some of the, the delitting things and the, the failed delitting things. And you know, just <laughs> my journey has been long. So check out the cards above and you can get caught up if you'd like. But the short story is this is a 7940X. It's a Skylake X platform. I have 128 gigabytes of a Corsair Dominator Platinum 3200 RAM, a one terabyte 970 Pro from Samsung, and a now outdated and underperforming 1080 Ti from EVGA. I will not get a 2080 Ti. I will not get a 2080 Ti. <sighs> So to give you the cliff notes here, I delitted my processor trying to achieve better temperatures, did not get what I wanted, ran into some really weird issues along the way, then went with a direct mount cooling solution, also did not solve my problem. And in my latest attempt in today's video, I do a full blown water cooling loop in hopes of finally putting this thing to rest. So let's take a second and run through everything that I purchased to water cool my computer. Now the entire loop was built from EK Waterblocks components. I got the Coolstream CE 420 millimeter triple 140 millimeter fan radiator. Now this thing is twice as thick as my H150i at 45 millimeters. Then I got the XREV 140 Revo D5 RGB PWM pump and reservoir combination. Then I got the Supremacy Evo CPU block. They're all ACF black 10 millimeter fittings. And for my choice of color, I went with Cryofuel Acid Green Fluid. And since I was doing this whole water cooling thing, I wanted to, you know, give it a little bit of justice to the revamp. I ended up ordering a crap ton of Corsair fans. And by crap ton, I mean just expensive because those fans are like way overpriced but they're RGB and why not? So basically I ended up getting eight 120 millimeter ML120 Pro fans and three ML140 Pro fans for the radiator. Now I actually did run some benchmarks here, three sets to be exact. I wanted to be able to show what the performance increase would be from the stock settings. Then my 4.2 gigahertz stable, semi-stable overclocking that I did with the all-in-one water cooler. And then finally, what I was able to achieve after playing around with the overclocking maximum, you know, temperatures and everything of the new water cooled loop. But before I get into that, of course, I'm going to show you the whole water cooling build, or at least most of it. I just stopped every once in a while to turn on the camera. So it'll still give you a good idea of how it went down. Now, first and foremost, what I had to do was of course clean out the radiator. To do this, I used a solution of one fourth distilled white vinegar and three fourth distilled water. I put it in the microwave and got it to a fairly warm temperature without getting it too hot. And then I flushed the radiator five times by filling it about 80% full, putting the caps on and shaking it vigorously to you know, shake loose anything that was left over from the machining. As soon as I was done doing that five times, I then flushed it five more additional times with regular distilled water. And in this video, I did try to capture some of the floating particles that I got from the first initial flushing that I did on the radiator. As you can see, there was actually a little bit of stuff left over and made me feel good about doing the whole flushing thing, which you're supposed to do, but still. So with that out of the way, let's jump into hopefully a semi-short montage of the build.
I can say this right off the bat, when you are wiring this many RGB fans from Corsair, it is a pain in the butt. I mean, just flat out 100% pain in the rear. You know, I bought two three packs, so they came with their own little miniature nodes, and, and those are the controllers that control the different RGB settings for each fan, and you have to hook them up in sequence, and then I ended up having one fan that went out, so it made the other ones past that one not work. I mean, it's just a big headache, not only for wiring, but get them to work in general, and if you don't know how they work, then it takes a little bit of time to understand how they work. Once you understand how they work, it's really easy to work with, but you know, it's just that first initial setup and, and trying to get them to work correctly that was a little bit of a pain in the butt. But one thing that I can say for this Lian Lee PCV3000 case is that there is plenty of room for water cooling. Now I end up putting four fans in the bottom of the case, not necessarily because I needed any additional airflow, but mainly because I wanted it to look, you know, brighter with more fans and colors and stuff. So it, it was pretty much all RGB vomit was the motivation for those fans. But where those fans are in the case, I have extra room to put a very large radiator if I needed more cooling capacity, which I don't, but if I did, I have more room to do so. Now as for the color, I went with green. Uh, green's kind of a weird color for me because I hate the color of like vomit green, but I like the color of neon green. So it's a little weird for me. But either way, I went with green and that's really the fluid itself is the only defining point that I can't easily change moving forward because all the other colors in my case are not hardware related. It's all just RGBs and I can change those RGB colors anytime that I want to. So while I'll show you some of this B-roll, let's talk about the stock settings and the benchmarks that I ran. Now, right from the boot on completely stock settings on my motherboard, it does turbo boost up to 3 8 gigahertz automatically at one volt. And with my all-in-one cooler being direct die mounted to the processor, when it was maxed out, it would hit about 64 degrees Celsius after five minutes of heavy load running on it. But with the benchmarks, starting off with Cinebench, I got 2,780. Then with Time Spy Extreme, I got a 4,791 overall score. For PC Mark 10 Express, I got a score of 4,013. And for a render time of a random five minute video that I decided to test all of this out, I got 12 minutes and 54 seconds. Now to make this a little easier, I'm gonna build some nice little bar graphs for you so you can see the improvements in style. So the next set of benchmarks were where I had a 4.2 average overclock with the all-in-one water cooler H150i from Corsair. Now with this one, when I ran heavy load for roughly about five minutes, I was hitting temperatures of 83 degrees Celsius. But at that, I got a Cinebench score of 3131, a PC Mark Express score of 4692, a Time Spy Extreme score of 4871, and my rendering on my five minute video took exactly the same amount of time of 12 minutes and 54 seconds. Now, once I had better cooling and everything seemed to be under control, I decided to get a little greedy with my overclocking. Pretty much, I had a goal in my head of around 87 to 88 degrees Celsius for a maximum like five minute, you know, heavy load testing temperature. However, I ended up at 93 degrees. Just keep in mind, this is only in a synthetic test that was prolonged for five minutes. So it actually is not going to be the same temperatures when I use something like Premiere Pro encoding because Premiere Pro is is just not very efficient. It doesn't use all your cores at 100% speed. It doesn't really use any of the cores at 100% speed. So temperatures are a lot lower when you're you know, rendering videos with Premiere Pro. But either way, I got a Cinebench score of 3413, a PC Mark Express score of 4812, a Time Spy Extreme score of 4923, 4576 of that being the GPU and 8648 of that being the CPU. And my rendering on Premiere Pro went from 12 minutes and 54 seconds on both the previous test to a whopping 12 minutes and seven seconds. But as a minor cliff note here, while I was using Adobe Media Encoder, I had a maximum temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. So again, it's not very efficient, 80 degrees Celsius, because it was like using, I don't know, somewhere between 65 to 85% of the processor at any given moment. So one might ask, Jason, was this all worth it? Was it worth delitting your chip to, you know, potentially get lower temperatures only to fail and have to get a direct die mounted cooling solution only to fail again and have to go full on water cooling loop? Well, I say to you, eh, maybe, 
I mean, with the all-in-one cooler, with the exception of maybe like three or four cores, I was running at 4.2 gigahertz. And with the new water cooling build, that brought my temperatures down from 83C all the way down to 72C. So it was a huge decrease in temperatures, but it was also a huge increase in radiator capacity. I mean, it's twice as thick and it uses three 140 millimeter fans versus the Corsair using only three 120 millimeter fans. But now I have the new cooling. I have a little bit better performance out of everything overall, I can actually get most of my cores up to 4.8 gigahertz. You can see a little bit more detail of what I achieved here. It's like 1.27 voltage. Most of them are running at 4.8 gigahertz. One of my you know, hot cores is only running at 3.9 gigahertz. And there are a few in there that are like 4.1 or 4.5 but this is like literally hours of tweaking and just increasing one core at a time, trying to get the best possible performance. So I would say what, 75% of them are running at 4.8 and the others are a little bit lower. And one in particular, AKA core number 14, is all the way down at 3.9 because it's, it's a pain in the butt and hates me. Maybe it wasn't worth it, but it was a slow roll for me and it allowed me to just, you know, keep tinkering with it. And uh, now I think finally I'm good. Good to go. There's really nothing else that I could do more besides buy a new processor. And I'm not going to get one of the brand new i9 processors. I will not get a 9980XE or whatever it is. I will not do that. That would be irresponsible. And I am a very responsible human being. Well, that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If not, make sure to dislike it below. Show me all that hate you can. But if you did like it, like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it if you did. Thank you for watching and have yourself a good night.